Welcome viewers to this second episode on the program of primary prevention of heart disease and the role of universal healing program, properly known as UHP. We have with us today a panel of highly distinguished medical practitioners, all of them cardiologists, who will be sharing their thoughts on prevention of heart disease and other related issues. Primary angioplasty has really decreased the mortality. Earlier, 15 out of 100 used to die. Now, less than 4% die. So, there is a big advance in the management of so-called heart attacks. And as he said rightly, that if a person of heart attacks comes to the hospital within first 12 hours, he must have an angioplasty. He must have an angiography and an angioplasty. That saves life. But otherwise, uh, if a patient is having stable angina, if he survived it after a few months, if he has blocked artery, that is not likely to cause any problem because that's a stable plaque. He said the myth should really go that if I have 90% block, I will get a heart attack. The truth is the other way. Large number of studies are there. People have 30, 40% blockage, they are likely to get. The reason is the type of uh, uh, plaque or the type of deposition is called unstable. They have a very thin layer of so-called fibrous tissue and a lot of fat is there, cholesterol is there. Such things can uh, break up. But a person who is having 90% with stable angina, it is a very thick plaque. There is a lot of fibrous tissue, very little cholesterol inside. Such plaques are stable. Even if they progress, the, there are no symptoms. I remember doing angioplasty long back when I started. I saw a couple of patients. We, we never used to do it at the same time, 90%, 95%. When I did it after three days, the artery was 100%. So we asked the patient, did you have any pain? No. The reason is if it is slowly increasing blockage, even 100%, there are natural bypasses, which the nature makes it. In a heart attack, there is no time to make uh, these natural bypasses. So a 90% artery in a stable angina is quite safe. Please remember that it is a 30-40% which doctors ignore. You should not ignore it. In this, those cases, uh, intensive medical therapy with uh, the alternative system like the universal healing program or yoga meditation is going to help very much because we have evidence with our research that unstable plaques possibly become stable. Yeah, when we did this study, we found that the regression, the, uh, the blockages regress very slightly, 3 to 5 percent. But the heart attacks reduced by 50 percent. Now, we couldn't explain it. The only way to explain was that the unstable plaque becomes stable. So, one of the greatest advantage of this uh, universal heart uh, health uh, healing program and uh, yoga meditation is that the, although the plaques may not regress too much, but they become stable. And that's why these patients will not get heart attack. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question to Dr. Balakrishnan. Recent observations are that 80 to 90 percent of bypass surgery and angioplasty are unnecessary. This is sort of a view. Uh, what is your response to this observation? I'm not, I'm not sure about the validity of such statements. Uh, first of all, um, these are procedures which are done in huge numbers all over the world. Okay. So for you to generalize as a passing sweeping statement, okay. uh, where do you get, get such data from? Are you, is it a hospital specific data, state specific data, country specific data? So that may or may not be true. Having said that, it is possible that some of the procedures that we have been advocating retrospectively may or may not be, and this is true for a whole lot of procedures worldwide, historically. Uh, if you look at literature from 1930s, uh, renopexy or viscerapexy used to be a very common operation. You know, they used to think that some of the pains in the loins was because of uh, visceroptosis. That means the organs used to float, you know, all kinds of... Okay. So having said that, um, uh, in a given case, uh, it's hard to say whether that particular... Uh, even if it was done in the best of intentions and faith, whether that p patient would have had as good an outcome uh, without the procedure or not, it's hard to tell. But uh, by and large, our understanding of these procedures is better now. And as I said, um, uh, with increasingly more sophisticated, better uh, medical treatment being available, uh, and especially if we follow better guidelines and better lifestyle modifications, uh, I agree with Dr. Kapadia that actually uh, there are some interesting studies in the the number of uh, cath labs in the United States which uh, practice uh, angioplasty actually has come down. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you another study. <laughs> if you look at the incidence of coronary artery disease, uh, I mean this is a um, uh, to slightly digress. The first the the f the the coronary plaques don't start at the age of 60. They start as as young as 15 or 20. And the first evidence we had thus was in 
uh, autopsy studies on, uh, on, on young victims of the Korean War, okay. 1951. The Journal of American Medical Association for the first time produced an autopsy series where they showed coronary plaques in people as young as 23 or 24. And the incidence roughly was around 30 odd percent. I did a study in, uh, in our city in Chennai about 15, 10 years ago, we published it, where we looked at road traffic accident victims uh, the, uh, of, up to the age of 30. We looked at 30 autopsy studies and looked at the, uh, and they, they died of an accident, so they didn't clearly die of a heart attack. And we found 35% of the heart showed significant plaques. Four of them had what we call severe triple acid disease. But what was interesting was all of them had, 30% had inflammatory infiltrates with neutrophils. So a normal coronary artery has no business to have white cells in it. So it brings to question the role of atmospheric pollution, uh, toxic fumes, diesel adulteration, and all kinds of other things. But the same JAMA actually published uh, five years ago, compared to the historic Korean study with more aggressive uh, advocacy of control of blood pressure, yeah. salt intake, and other exercise, and so on and so forth. The autopsy uh, evidence of uh, prevalence of coronary artery disease is less than what was shown in 1950. So as uh, the esteemed panelists have shown, prevention has a great role to play in this. Yeah, but these are very interesting facts you pointed out, sir. Thank you very much. But this is also true that the heart disease is increasing in the young age. Yes. We do angioplasty it's, um, in, in, our 20, population. in our population. In our population. But not yes. in the Western this population. Is, yeah. This is because uh, we are having very unhealthy lifestyles. Yes. See. And that is very important to say. Yeah. For primary prevention, a proper diet, regular exercise, yeah. we will be no stress. coming to that yeah, very okay, shortly, because of course, that, that's because a, that's a that is most key component. The, the, the stress is a factor which is a very, very important factor. I've yes. seen in young executives who get heart attacks. True. It's, it's occurring in 20s. I never used to see it about 40 years back. That's very true, sir. Years true. In lots of cases. Moving back to Dr. Kaparia. Can you explain us the key components very briefly about the universal healing program and the significance of each component of the UHP? Very briefly. Uh, well, you know, we say five components. Five uh, components, The first is yes. the diet, you know, the advice regarding the diet. And then the light stretching and, and, walk, and regular walking on level for about 30, 40 minutes daily. Hmm. And light stretching and relaxation exercises leading to progressive deep relaxation, which we call Savasana, and meditation and visual imagery. And lastly, the most important, group discussion with sharing of feelings. So these five components we added, and we had an opportunity to deal with thousands of patients, thousands, because uh, gradually, the, because we put with the whole program uh, f for the people, so uh, there was no fee attached to it to come to the program. And we put the whole thing on internet and uh, various media completely free. And then we had the occasion to see the feedback from people who were continuing the medical treatment and who were doing the program regularly for about six weeks or three months or four months. And they could give up tobacco. This, uh, tobacco habit is the worst habit and which will increase the incident. And, and it, it it's really does not allow any treatment to be effective, whether it is angioplasty, bypass surgery, or medical treatment. And tobacco habit is very difficult to give up. Yes. And that we have found that if the regular practice of shavasana and meditation as shown, very simply shown and very effectively, because it, did, it was directed by Swami Sachinanandji, who, who believed that he had a challenge to teach that technique to the hippies and the Americans who would not like to, you know, all that usual way of teaching this yoga. So he did it very simply and I was very happy to see that in the Americans who are very busy and who never had a knowledge of yoga at all, but they could practice it very well as simply shown. And that we, pra that we introduced. And with that simple practice of savasana and meditation, I found that 80% of the people could give up tobacco after practicing it for about six months. So that was a great uh, uh, achievement, I thought. And also, somehow or other, that the medical treatment that they were taking became more effective. Thank you. So that is how 
meditation and savasana help in the treatment of uh, heart disease uh. now uh, could you comment on how stress and anger damage the heart what do you suggest to control them even if they are not heart patients to say well stress is if you if you have an acute stress it leads to narrowing of the coronary arteries you see the whole subject of coronary heart disease is surrounded by two things one is the regular block by the by by the plex but actually the arteries are very sensitive and therefore any any emotion and acute stress can lead to the narrowing of the coronary arteries almost 100% quickly not only that the circulating blood can become thick thousand times when you get a, a, a stress or an anger which is uncontrolled and uh, i have seen my patients who have done we were doing excellent you know in medical treatment and usual uh, and usual relaxation technique but in a burst of anger which they could not control for various reasons they have died they have died so stress is a very important factor in starting the symptoms in progress of the disease and the ultimate effect of any treatment that you are taking whether it is a medical treatment or the medical treatment helped by angioplasty or bypass surgery so stress is a very important factor to be dealt with when you are dealing with the patient of coronary heart disease therefore the art of communication by the cardiologist to the patient i think is of great importance which i learned in my early days in uk and also in usa where i was a chief resident in cardiology with with a five medical schools attached to it and at that time there was no angiography or angioplasty and the way in which they were treated and way in which in special in uk where they had the they, they, they were had a in um, in 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 uk where uh, health service was at its peak and there were no expense involved and the consultants were paid so well that they had no worry about what they will get the fee and in that atmosphere when i studied i i became doctor only in uk i never did anything here so there i found that that was that was golden years i found the method that by talking to the patient in the right spirit and encouraging the right spirit has a lot to do with this sensitive problem of coronary heart disease coronary heart disease is not only physical as now it has been established by various studies in in narrowing of this and narrowing of that and, uh, and but i think it is the 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 main thing is that the whole th whole approach my consultant when i did my mrcp in cardiology and i was coming home he said only one advice and he was a very important person in uk he said to me dr kaparia now you are a consultant when you go home you will be seeing the heart patients not on the day when he gets the heart attack but you will be seeing him after 3 days or 4 days or after a week and if he is alive then you will see him then remember that he is going to be alive Wonderful. and treat him like that and that approach i applied right from the day one in 1965 and i am very happy and uh, to some extent proud to tell you that i never lost anyone anyone and at that time in ahmedabad city like ahmedabad we had no private hospitals we were only three corporation hospitals and we had to admit people only in the corporate hospitals and in special rooms sometimes but large majority whom i treated from 65 to 85 or 86 large majority i treated them if their home for good at home okay once i took a patient of uh, for for bypass for considered bypass surgery to denton coley one of my wealthy patients and when he asked me dr kapadia i heard a lot about you how do you treat your heart patients you know that so when i told him that i treat him at home you know reaction home he just threw up in the chair and he said that how can you treat the person with heart attack at home but then though there were homes at that time now there are no homes of course no so it's very important that the yeah. communication of the well, doctor and the right. patient and you know in all cases now i like to uh, add a little bit in the stress you see please lot of scientific research has been done how the stress can cause heart disease not only heart disease diabetes high blood pressure also the two types of stresses as you said one is acute stress for example a person suddenly becomes angry yeah. not only he can damage his heart there is something called heart failure it's a cardiomyopathy called stress induced cardiomyopathy yeah. he can go into heart failure symptom like heart attack immediately a person who gets acutely angry i have seen his heart rate may become irregular he may die suddenly 
right. a person may go into heart failure a person as he said may suddenly have a heart attack also the artery which is already uh, not partially blocked it can completely block so that is one thing but what is the research research shows when we are angry or we have ego or we have hostility we have jealousy what happens is our uh, two systems get bad one is the so called the hypophysis pituitary adrenal axis this is a brain there is a organ in the brain and the other is the autonomic nervous system when the brain is affected the hypophysis system the whole endocrine system there are a lot of catecholamines there are yeah. bad uh, hormones which are and these bad hormones with the uh, uh, abnormal uh, nervous system they interact yeah. in such a way that ultimately inflammation and uh, oxidative stress is produced that inflammation causes damages the arteries they abrades the pancreas damages and causes heart attack okay. causes diabetes yeah. and causes right. even sudden death yeah, yeah. your view on this please see it's it's interesting in fact this is uh, um pretty recent uh, i'll add uh, my own bit to this um the, the question you asked actually is interesting uh, how does stress cause i mean is a yeah. simpler the question more profound it is <laughs> it's not easy to answer because uh, it's one thing to say anecdotally stress it causes uh, heart attacks blah blah yes. blah but how so uh, there is a lot of recent study and this came out of as you know one of the uh, fastest growing uh, areas of heart failure is use of mechanical heart pumps uh, so called left ventricular assist devices uh, which use uh, the pumps don't produce a pulse they're continuous flow pumps so what now they have shown is uh, uh, increase amount of catecholamines dr manchinda mentioned about uh stress releases hormones increase amount of catecholamines almost also seem to affect the mechanical properties of the vessels the elasticity comes down and they become stiffer so it's a vicious cycle the less elastic your brake vessels are uh, higher your blood pressure is and lower your pulse pressure is they become less pulsatile and that starts a vicious cycle and so there is a uh, direct physical effect of stress on your vessels it is uh, apart from uh, spasm there is a chronic change which takes place in the mechanical properties so it makes sense for all of us to control whether anger or stress levels having said that it's easier to say it rather than to practice <laughs> it as well uh dr banchanda a question which is of your pet research topic there is a common belief that blockages in the arteries cannot be reversed is the reversal of blockages at all possible yes it is possible there are many methods of reversing it there are drugs which have been shown statins which in high dose have been shown to reverse only slightly but early stage it is possible to research we have shown two studies we have done one the early blockages when the, uh, the artery has started to become thick this is called this happens in a metabolic syndrome you know there is a disease which indians have they are very fat in the abdomen they have what is called metabolic syndrome they may not be overweight but their tummy is uh, uh, very bulging outside and they have uh, also high cholesterol high blood pressure such people are very prone to get heart attack as well as diabetes now in such people the arteries have got thickened and we have done yoga meditation a part of uh, uh, universal uh, healing program and we have shown reversal is possible in those completely advanced disease also there are four studies including dean orish and ours we have shown it is possible to regress it by 4 or 5 or 6%. So there are three studies using different methods meditation raj yoga we have used a priksha meditation and yes. non issues any system you use ultimately the stress is reduced and it is possible to reduce it but as i said although the reduction is small 4 to 5% the progression is not there if you okay. control studies the progression secondly these uh, people have very little heart attack mortality is reduced by 30% by 4 or 5 should not cause that so what is said is that uh, these unstable plaques become stable so this yoga meditation helps in stabilizing the plaques so regression may not be too much in the advanced disease early stage yes it's possible so it is possible to regress it partially but it is important to change the morphology of the plaque so that heart attacks don't occur the people don't die okay now one more thing um, uh, which you are specializing in what is the proper diet for patients of coronary heart disease <laughs> <laughs> yes this is a very difficult question because a lot of controversy i tell my patient doctor you say sometimes ghee is good sometimes ghee is bad and all that thing <laughs> so what is this happening there is complete confusion going on yes. but i'll just tell you the scientifically proven four things are there now one is we should not use uh, 
trans fats, you know, these hydrogenated oils, yes. which Halwa is used it again and again. Secondly, these trans fats are produced by reheating the oil again and again and again. The second thing is, which is definitely proven, is we should avoid refined things. Jagri good ha has been changed into sugar. Sugar is the new culprit now. Similarly, this uh, uh, white bread should be avoided because uh, we have changed wheat into this maida, which yes. is dangerous. The third thing, rice should not be refined. And fourthly, the oil should not be refined by because refining we are spoiling it. So first is trans fats, the other is the sugar or the refined thing. The third which has come out is very clearly that fruits and vegetables should be taken in plenty. If you take it three, four times, fruits and nuts. Nuts are extremely good, including cashew nuts. You will be surprised why patients ask me, will it increase cholesterol? No, it decreases. A lot of studies are there that these nuts have fat, but this is a good fat. So nuts are extremely uh, protective and you should take less of, uh, uh, less of uh, salt. So these four things you follow, this is the ideal thing. You should take lots of fruits, vegetables, again I will say. Avoid uh, uh, so called the trans fats, that is the hydrogenated oils and use lots of uh, fats. Uh, there was a lot of controversy whether we should take cholesterol or saturated fats. A huge study has been done, pure trial, which shows there is no need of limiting the fats. A good oil is of course a mustard oil which is unrefined because it is the highest, but ghee is extremely good. We have been telling our patients not to take ghee, their HDL has come down. Now ghee is saturated fats, there is a lot of meta analysis shown that saturated fats is not bad. So ghee and coconut oil are extremely good. Actually, they are very good for Indian conditions because we fry the things. And these so-called refined oils, they get detoxified and all. So ghee is good for us. The nuts are good. The fruits are good. But the bad thing is that salt, sugar, and uh, trans fats. Thank you, because that's an important clarification. Uh, Dr. Balakrishnan, it's a very common question, basic question, but we would like to hear it from the surgeon's mouth. Please explain what harm smoking does and can you suggest the best way to give up this habit? The best way to give up the habit is to not start it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. Uh, and frankly, um, I think there's a lot of effort being done in this country. In fact, I travel a lot, I'm sure like all of you do. The, uh, the, uh, the incidence of, uh, the, or the, the, the amount of smoking which is done in public places in this country actually has come down substantially, at least in airports and in restaurants, smoking is not allowed, whereas if you go to uh, even France, uh, smoking is everywhere, uh, and Middle East is rampant. Smoking uh, is injurious, not just to coronary artery, it's injurious to blood vessels. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the major uh, impact of smoking is in peripheral vascular disease. You get gangrene, mm -hmm. you get amputated legs, you get strokes, uh, so smoking uh, the nicotine contained in smokes is injurious to blood vessels. It causes, uh, apart from heart attacks and strokes, it causes uh, cancer of um, very major impact on lung cancer. Passive smoking is as dangerous. So smoking, you not only kill yourself, you kill your wife and children as well. So um, some of the efforts which have been taken is uh, the uh, warnings in cigarette packets and even in, in, in films and movies, uh, whenever the hero lights up uh, to have a small advisory that smoking causes cancer. And uh, in the olden days, I remember whether James Bond or Rajni Kant or any of yes. the heroes, yes. uh, one young woman is screaming, uh, falling down from a mountain, he'll light up a cigarette and with one hand, uh, you know, so a, a feeling of, or even this uh, camel or this cowboy is wearing uh, Stetson hats and smoking. So it created an aura of uh, glamour and uh, romance True. around smoking, it was which killed a generation of people all over the world. Yes. Fortunately, it's coming down, but still, um, uh, I think the incidence of smoking in India is coming down. Uh, though um, there are other smokes which are being spooled by automobiles which are not necessarily uh, being banned. Uh, I think that's uh, maybe he should address no, it at some point. There are two points I would like to say in smoking. Yeah. Although yeah. smoking is coming down, and I agree with him, awareness is there. But tobacco chewing of tobacco, ah, chewing, chewing tobacco is increasing in our country. This is very unfortunate because chewing tobacco is much worse than that. Not only it causes heart disease, it causes cancer of the throat, uh, which is the highest in our country. So I think important thing so is that the both ads things for Gutka and all that. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, 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 because yes. that is a very, very non-inhaled smoke is extremely dangerous, and this has been uh, going on increasing. We should really do something about it. One of the best methods of giving up is meditation. I have tried all methods. There are, you know, there are tablets, there are uh, patches, there are uh, tablets. But I have found 
if you can teach a person meditation, he because what is meditation after all? According to the ancient uh, yoga text, yeah. what we we are not the only body. We have something called mind and consciousness. Mind is the lower mind, and the lower mind has so-called hate and uh, love, and it has duality. The higher mind does not have. The yoga takes you to the higher mind, and uh, the lower mind really causes all these problems. So if you can control the mind, I always say heart disease starts in the mind. Actually, the reason why we have failed to tackle it, in spite of all the advances, is we have not really. Uh, address the mind because the, I ask my patients, why don't you exercise? He says, Doctor, I want to go. I get up in the morning, but my mind says, don't go today. It is raining. It's uh, yesterday. You had a late night, mm. and tomorrow some <laughs> other excuse. He goes to a party. He knows that bad food is there. Uh, he knows it's bad, but his mind says, take it today, not tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. <laughs> smoking. He says, smoking is bad, but my mind says, one or two seconds doesn't matter. So it is the mind control. Who creates these thoughts? So, and this is what we have found universal. Yeah. Uh, system and our uh, system of meditation has shown that we correct the we mi- make the mind strong. The moment mind is strong, yeah. it is given up. We run also courses like he does meditation, and during that five six residential course, they never ask for s- tobacco. They never ask for, it. so it is possible to reduce it by meditation. Oh, that's interesting. So be essentially. It's meditation that leads to mind control. Yeah. It not only helps smoking, but so many other any habits. Now, the last uh, question in today's episode, Dr. Balakrishnan, please express your view on chelation therapy. Now, there are a lot of things in the media. See, why ask this question? It's a <laughs> medical term. But as I said, there are a lot of things in the media, so people get confused. So that's why we took the, this question today. I know we have a couple of centers close to the hospital which uh, claim to reverse <laughs> coronary artery disease. Mm. Uh, I, I, I have not found any scientific evidence that they necessarily do anything worthwhile. Yeah, it started, you see, this is a method which is used for this, uh, taking out the poisonous uh, material like lead, mercury, etc. Yes. It is established, yes. accepted. But not now in some people thought that the calcium of the coronary <laughs> arteries will go. It has been going for 35 years. All the trials have been negative. There is only one positive trial, which is also very weakly positive. And... Uh, that's why uh, uh, hard trials are going on, but at present it's completely useless. There could be side effects also at the, t- at the level where you are giving and all. So I think as far as today's scientific knowledge, the chelation therapy is useless. Thank you. Uh, to conclude, I feel this session has been a great take home for all of our users and all these three panelists, these experts have clarified a lot of issues regarding heart disease and its prevention and which is very important for our nation, especially for the young generation. I'm grateful to these three panelists, Dr. Kaparia, Dr. Manchanda, and Dr. Balakrishnan, for sparing their time and resolving a lot of common issues which is in the minds of the common man. And we also wish that Dr. Kaparia's universal healing program will go a long way and spread across the country to help not only in the prevention of heart disease, but the overall well-being of an individual. Thank you, viewers.